Sorry. Okay, Dr. Mrs. Salau, I'm not sure she had actually joined, but we will um, commence without wasting up much of our time. Um, as we normally do, uh, this meeting is uh, our presenter will take the first 30 minutes and run, um, our lead presenter will run the first 30 minutes of the discussion of the day. And uh, our discussant will come up, um, take the next 10 minutes to discuss some full of um, some of the full of questions and make his own contribution, backing up uh, what the lead presenter has actually done. I'll be moderating um, the entire program. Um, this is supposed to run at the maximum of an hour, 30 minutes. And also, uh, the first thing usually is uh, we'll make an introduction to who we are. Uh, and we introduce the topic, run through our uh, opening address, um, usually by our CEO. And uh, the presentation starts, then we'll go into question and answer. Then uh, we'll run our closing remarks and we can actually adjoin to the next meeting. Um, this meeting usually was every first Monday of, last Monday of every month, rather, but we've changed it to Wednesday, last Wednesday of every month. So please, I want us to take note of that. Um, today, we are bringing to you another, another um, discussion under the auspices of uh, Initiative Advancement in Mining, Edge Sciences, and Environmental Protection, I myself, in collaboration with um, EMA Group, which is a mineral advocacy group under the umbrella of this same non organization. Um, this group is non governmental and is composed of different professionals, uh, mining engineers, um, geoscientists, uh, miners, entrepreneurs, you know. We are actually trying to come together to bring awareness about um, the Nigerian geology and mineral resources alongside with uh, our students, educators, investors, and in general public. Our mission is to foster awareness about what we have here at different levels, and we'll try to bridge the existing gap among all relevant stakeholders while we still uphold the best. Uh, um, practices. So this is who we are. And today we'll be actually looking at an interesting uh, topic um, that has to do with that has to do with analyzing mineral statistics and their contribution to energy mix. I uh, want to give a comprehensive overview of, of this topic. And uh, we have a lot of professionals in the house who are going to be contributing to this. And also, the essence of this is mainly to, to ensure that we are aware of what we have and possibly see how we can, even as two scientists, look at some of the strengths we have in house in Nigeria, especially some of the critical minerals that are actually involved in the energy mix, you know, to see how we can also bring life to some of these minerals. Uh, just like this morning, somebody was calling me and asking of a particular mineral. I told him that that mineral is not actually our strength in Nigeria, but it is one of the globally um, uh, required mineral when it comes to energy. In short, if you go to the energy mix mineral, you find out that that is one of the, the number one minerals that you actually require. So, you see. so mineral is a major player in global energy mix. There is no doubt. And this... Uh, Resources play a vital role in shaping the global energy landscape. So, as uh, this um, demand for energy continues to grow, definitely there will be demand for production, and all this production definitely um, also have effect to our environment. So, as we are looking at production, we'll be looking at some environmental concerns, you know. So, we'll also be looking at detailed analysis of some of the mineral statistics. Um, as they are very much imperative to the energy mix, you know, and also we we'll look at the old energy system that have been focused on the fossil fuel extraction, 
and the uh, use of also non-renewable mineral resources like that of coal and gas as we have in Nigeria. You know, non-renewable um, uh, renewable energy actually uh, plays a significant role uh, today. And also till in the next 20 years, it might not actually be redundant. So there are still a very um, much um, time for these uh, fossil fuels to actually be there, you know. So uh, irrespective of the issues of solar food, um, um, uh, solar energy, vote, um, photovoltaics, and some of the wind and electric vehicles that are actually invoke, this actually made all these minerals to become very, very vital. So today we'll just uh, run into it and see what we have, and we'll see where we can actually focus on that. But before we go on, I don't know if Dr. Mrs. Salau is already here. If she's not here, I will actually go forward. Um, I'm not seeing her on the list. Uh, she would have given us um, a kind of a welcome address. Um, okay, without that, I will want to also um, just uh, bring on board immediately our presenter. Our presenter today is a lady. She'll be joining us from United Kingdom. Uh, she is a geologist um, and a consultant strategic policy. And um, Chidema Irua is uh, also a uh, is also an entrepreneur and also specialized on low carbon features. She earns a first degree in geology in Nigeria, and right now she's actually on on a PhD on a funded PhD in environmental sciences. You know she's got some years of experience in mining, oil industry too, so, and. Uh, she went into sustainability, where she's actually currently a circular economy and a sustainability consultant with Cyrock Enterprise. And also, Chidema is also a guest lecturer. And she has also done some certain work, also here in Nigeria, I think, she has done some, a lot of work in uh, environmental related issues also. She's also a co-founder of uh, Tessite Coalition Network, a mining policy network. Is a parent council lead, and she she facilitates a lot of um, international conferences uh, with um, over fifty country, countries. So, if I want to read about a lot of things uh, she's been involved, we might not have the time to complete that. And the second discussant, I will bring him also David. Um, when he's coming, I will probably read a brief uh, profile of, uh, of David. So um, right now, I will not wait much time by Chidema. Thank you. You have your slide. I have to welcome yeah. the platform. Um, please, the platform is yours now. You are sharing yourself, right? I should. Let me just get to the view. One minute. Okay. Screen share, okay. Post as disabled. Okay, I think I'm on from your end. It looks like it's kind of disabled. The screen share. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. I need to enable you to do that. Um, wait. Okay, you can share now. Okay. Okay, okay. Right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, but it's not in a full mode. Okay. You need to put it in a full mode. Hmm. We can see your screen, is but it, it's not in the It's still not in the full mode. Yeah, you need to first of all, for it to be on a full mode, you need to first of all put it in a full mode, then you now go back to bring it up on a full mode. Okay. If you share and you want to put it on a full mode, you won't be able to do that. You won't, okay. Uh, go back again. Put it on a full mode on your own no, system, but you now go to share. Right. 
Do you have different slides from my own? I can share from here. Is the same is is the same thing? Is the same thing? If it's um, it's okay. the same thing actually. Okay. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't have exits. different slides, then I can actually I can. It's the same this. one that I sent. Okay. I can easily yeah. let me see if I have a full mood here. I think I have a full mood here. Okay. Right. I have a full mood here. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gideon, again for um, putting me on board. And I'm always happy to be with yourselves. And and as Gideon has already uh, and, uh, spoken about the topic, it's about analyzing mineral statistics and their contribution to the energy mix. So we'll be looking at a comprehensive overview of this minerals and how it actually encompasses the, the en energy mix. And um, on the, the first slide, minerals, um, as we already know, is a major, ma major player in the global energy mix. And because it's a major player in the energy global mix, it shapes policies, it um, shapes the global energy landscape. And as the world continues to grapple with the challenges of meeting the growing energy demands while addressing environmental concerns, a detailed analysis of mineral statistics is highly imperative. We can't um, go uh, about it in any other way. And um, old energy systems that were uh, focused on fossil fuel extractions, and these energy systems were using mostly non-renewable mineral resources, which are coal, oil, gas, etc. Why the non renewable minerals are still significant in today's energy mix. The awareness of the benefits of renewable energy, for example, its recyclability, and also the transitioning push from fossil fuel to renewable has further highlighted the significance of these minerals. Statistics as we have it, and a lot of major re data research in the sciences, uh, as well as other, uh, data have shown that energy production from renewable sources is much more intensive in minerals than that from um, the fossil fuel industry. And when we look at how the what you know the contributions of this fossil fuel, uh, the contributions of the renewable energy in today's energy mix, we we'll start to go into some of these um, systems, which are so solar photovoltaic plants the wind farms, the electric vehicles, and this normally generally require more minerals to build than the fossil fuel can counterparts. So for example, a typical uh, electrical energy would require six times of its mineral inputs, but of a, uh, inputs so that uh, in a conventional car, rather than a conventional car, you see that on an onshore wind plant. And you also see that that would require more minerals than a gas fired plant. And um, since 2010, the average amount of minerals needed for a new unit of power generation capacity has increased by 50% as the share of renewables have risen over time. So this was gotten from the International Energy Agency. Uh, so the next slide, I was just running through the aim of this particular um mineral statistics that we are looking at. So what it aims to, to, to tell us today is to delve into the intricate relationship between mineral resources and the energy mix, highlighting their contributions, challenges, and potential for, for sustainable development. The objectives we'll be looking at today are to understand the role of minerals in energy production, examine environmental impacts and sustainability challenges, explore statistical trends in mineral and, uh, production and consumption, evaluate the interplay between minerals and energy policies and identify opportunities and challenges in the mineral energy nexus. Then when we talk about um, what are the key minerals that we can find in the industry today, we start to look at then again 
oil and gas sector that you have the coal, as I've previously mentioned, and the oil and gas, they are still playing a major lead and continue to play a major lead till 2050 in the energy mix. Then the renewable energy sector, it goes by various pathways because there are various pathways that we've identified previously when you come to renewables. These are the wind, you have solar, you have the geothermal, and of course there are numerous minerals that are used when you talk about generating these sources of energy. They require cobalt, they require aluminum, silicon, rare earth elements, lithium, and the rest. When we talk about energy mix today, what we find out is that the uh, fossil fuel is still um, looking as, at a lot of um, settings within the world energy outlook prediction that this fossil fuel is going to continue to be in the energy mix till 2040. There are some stated policies, which are policies that were brought together by several countries, about 200 countries. And they you know, had several meetings and during their plans, uh, the, the stated policies found out that, uh, that this energy mix will, will continue to play vital, this, this um, uh, coal, oil and gas continue to play a vital role, even as we transition away from them till 2040. And when I go into the next slide, uh, it talks more about the stated policies and how um, the uh, electricity generation by fuel what looks like between 2018 to 2040. And on this particular slide, we would see that um, in 2018, that coal, oil, and gas still play a vital role. You find out that coal is about um, 5,000 tons watts per hour in electric generation, electricity generation as of 2018, and in seconded by gas, and then you have oil, which is about 0.5. Um, thousand tons watts per hour and then you find out that it's also continued in 2020 2030 and then when you come again to 2040 you find out that the renewable energies start to sprout out and are sprouting out higher and higher but then the oil and gas and coal still play a vital role now talking about the characteristics of this um natural minerals we find out that the coal is a primary source of electricity generation and industrial processes, energy production. It's also used for combustion for steam generation in coal fired plants. Then you have the oil, which is a versatile energy source for transportation, heating and industrial applications. It's also used in energy production, refining in gasoline, diesel and jet fuel, also used in power generation. Then the natural gas is used in burning fuel for electricity generation, heating, and industrial processes. It's also used, uh, uh, utilized in plants as feedstock for various industrial applications. Copper is essential in electrical wiring, motors, transformers, and power generation equipment. It's also a key component in the construction of power cables and electrical infrastructure. Aluminium is a lightweight and durable material. It's used in um, wind turbines, electric vehicle components. It's also an integral uh, lightweight construction in renewable energy technologies. Uranium is used for nuclear power plants, energy production, fission reactions in nuclear reactors, generates heat for electricity generation. Then lithium is a critical component, as we know, in renewable energy batteries. Lithium ion batteries play a very important, lithium plays a very important role in these batteries. It's also it's used to store energy in batteries for electrical vehicles, renewable energy systems, and portable electronics. Then you have the cobalt, which is used in lithium ion batteries catalysts and super alloys. It's also, it also enhances the performance and stability of batteries used in electrical vehicles and renewable energy storage. Rare earth elements. The rare earth elements is essential in production of magnets, catalysts, and components for wind turbines, electrical vehicles, and electronic devices. It's also an 
integral parts of renewable energy technologies, including turbines and electrical vehicle motors. Graphite is a key component in lithium ion batteries as an anode. It also contributes to energy storage capacity of batteries in electrical vehicles and renewable energy systems. Then looking at minerals and natural resources in the energy mix, going by sectors, we'll find out that in the transportation sector, kilogram per vehicle, that the, uh, these um, natural resources are used more in the modern day uh, transitioned um, renewable uh, technologies like the electric car more than the conventional car. So for example, if we look at the, the, the electric car, we'll find out the electric car co is consuming about 50 to 60 kilograms per vehicle and that followed by lithium, which is about 10 kilograms. And then we have nickel which is about 80 kilograms and then manganese about 30 kilograms. And we also see this cobalt and this graphite. Whereas in a conventional car, the quantity is very limited. It's not um, even, the copper is not even up to 40% and the manganese is about 30%. Then in power generation, kilograms as well, we we'll find out that the offshore wind has a whole lot of copper and the copper is about 8,000 kilograms. And that of the lithium, it's about 0 0.5 kilograms. And then we have manganese, which is about two kilograms or about, um, yeah. And you also have the other ones like chromium, molybdenum, zinc. Then there's the onshore wind. Then there's the solar photovoltaic, the nuclear, the coal and then natural gas. But what we've, we've, we can see here is that these minerals and the natural resources will continue to play a vital role and investments are in them continue to increase in the future as the future yeah. is moving and transitioning towards the renewable energy. And we want to look at the mineral and energy linkages. Minerals and metals have played a, a very critical role in the rise of many of the clean energy technologies that are widely used today, from wind turbines and solar panels to electrical vehicles and battery storage. As the deployment of clean energy technologies rises, the energy sector is also becoming a vital part of these minerals. With clean energy transitions, the linkages between minerals and energy are set to strengthen. The type and volume of mineral needs vary widely across the spectrum of clean energy technologies, as we can see with the wind turbine technologies, which we've already spoken about, the electrical vehicle chemistries. In the next um, slide, we're going to see more how these um, various metals are used in these technologies. So um, the clean energy technologies can see that, that the solar photovoltaic has a high um, component of cop copper, and then, Cobalt is low, nickel is low, lithium is low, rare earth elements low, chromium is low, zinc low, and then we have the platinum group metals, and which is low, and aluminium, which is high. Um, then if we see in wind, same sparsely distributed, copper high, cobalt, nickel low, lithium, rare earth elements, and then aluminium. And then we find out that the concentrated solar power also has similar, even though uh, the str this is, is strengths are in chromium and aluminium. And you have the bioenergy has a high strength of copper and the very low of zinc and aluminium, geothermal energy, nickel, chromium. And then you have the nuclear energy, which has a good strength in copper, nickel, and chromium. Then you see the electricity networks. It has high strength in copper and aluminium. And then we have the electrical vehicles and battery storage, high strength in copper, cobalt, nickel, lithium, rare earth elements, and aluminium. And hydrogen has a very strong um, 
strength in platinum group metals. Then, mineral demand for clean energy will continue to surge up. So as clean uh, transition, energy transition significantly impacts mineral demand over the two next decades, by 2040, mineral demand from energy technologies is expected to double or quadruple in different scenarios. Like as previously stated, we saw the specific scenario, which was the stated scenarios that um, cuts across different um, uh, uh, continents, different regions, Eurasia, Europe, Asia, uh, uh, Middle East, Central and uh, South America, North America, but Japan and Korea has a very high percentage in coal as it currently stands and it's continued to surge and as statistics are shown in the next couple of two decades. Then copper, graph, graphite and nickel will dominate mineral demand weight in 2040 with lithium experiencing the fastest growth rate Electrical vehicles and battery storage will drive about half of the mineral demand growth with demand for materials like lithium, copper, graphite, and nickel increasing significantly. Electricity networks currently account for 70% of mineral demand from energy technology, but are expected to increase as electric vehicles increase and storage grow. Mineral demand from low carbon power generation, particularly wind and solar, will also increase rapidly as international energy agency forecasts major growth in demand for nickel, zirconium, copper, and platinum group metals due to hydrogen use and fuel cell electrical vehicles. Rare earth elements demand will also grow significantly for electric vehicle motors and wind turbines. Revenues from producing minerals for clean energy technologies are also set to increase, challenging coal's dominance in revenue generation for mining companies. And obviously, as we know, with mining companies are very essential and important in Africa, in Nigeria, especially where we are taking the lead in lead sink and there are some you know, some parts of the country that also has lithium and other minerals. Then looking at mineral demand for clean energy, this will continue to increase. And um, if we delve into the future of these natural resources and the wind, and 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 we look at how what's going on, we find out that. We have a lot of uh, uh, power generation in electrical works, EV, e, EVS and battery storage, as well as hydrogen. So in 2010, there was um, high demand for electric, I would say 5%, and followed by the uh, other low carbon energy the demand is about one percent and the solar solar photovoltaic the demand was about 0 0.5 percent and this increased significantly by 2020 where we can see that the electrical networks increased to about eight percent in demand and look at the EVs and battery storage, which is about 1%. And you have other low carbon power technologies about 0.5%. And wind is about 2%. Solar photovoltaic about 2%. This also increased significantly to 2030. And then when we got to 2040, you also find out that it's two times the normal average which um, we've seen in between 2010 and 2030. And this continued to increase significantly. Again, this just shows some variations between um, demands as I had already stated, there are so many policies and because the, you know some of the scenarios are put in, you see that uh, when they, when they uh, create them, they, they, they come in different forms. You have, the, you have it in, in this particular range, and then you have another range between 2030 to 2040, just to show how the surge of this um, demand for clean energy will continue to increase. Then going to the next slide, where we'll talk about significant environmental impacts and sustainability challenges. As you already know, 
every good thing comes with its own challenges as well. And looking at the energy mix, because um, the grid will still continue to need coal, oil, and gas, and also generating this um, new um, renewable energy has its own side effect because when you're mining this, um, some of these metals, they still also pollute the environment. Um, so yeah, the, the areas of risk include the climate change with higher greenhouse gas emissions intensities than normal production of energy transition minerals can be a significant source of emissions as the demand rises. Changing patterns of demand and types of resource targeted for development pose upward pressure. Then looking at the land use, mining brings major changes in land cover that can have adverse impacts on biodiversity. Changes in land use can result in the displacement of communities and the loss of habitats that are home to endangered species. Of course, the more land that is being needed, maybe because this uh, minerals are in bulk in that particular community, the more it displaces the owners of that land. So um, owner, land ownership is a big challenge. Then water management, mining and mineral processing require large volumes of water for the operations and post contamination risks to acid mine drainage, wastewater discharge and disposal of tailings. Water scarcity is also a major barrier to the development of these mineral resources, which stresses the environment. Of course, as we know it, um, you know, if you look at Nigeria, we also have issues about water scarcity sometimes. And you know, if we look at how global lithium is needed and copper production concentrated in some high areas, those areas are actually water stressed in the areas where they're located. Then the waste, declining oil quality can lead to a major increase in mining waste. Example, tailings, waste trucks, tailings dam failure can cause large scale environmental disaster. Mining and mineral processing generates hazardous waste, heavy metal contamination, radioactive material contamination. Then on the governance side of things, we have mineral revenues in resource rich countries have not always been used to support economic and industrial growth and are often diverted to finance armed conflict or for private gain. Corruption and bribery pose major liability risks for companies. There's also social, other uh, social issues, which are in, include health and safety, workers um, face poor mining conditions and workplace hazards, just as we know about the artisanal miners. Artisanal miners are often exposed to toxic chemical waste and accidents. Workers at artisanal and small scale mine sites often work in unstoppable underground mines without access to safety equipment. There's also human rights issues, mineral exploitation, may lead to adverse impacts on the local po population, such as child or forced labor. For example, children have been found to be present at about 30% of COBA uh, and as, as in, in, in the DLC areas, as, and, as, and also changes in community associated with mining may also have an unequal impact on, on women. Women have been seen to also be uh, part of this artisanal miners, if not a whole lot of women, then to actually get their feeding, especially in places like the Dominic Republic of Congo. And next slide, we are going to speak about major production of clean energy mineral. Uh, this major pro this, uh, production is talking about the extraction and the processing of these minerals. For the fossil fuel, which, um, you know, what we we'll look at is the oil and natural gas. We'll find out that U.S. dominates in terms of extraction. The oil, U.S. extraction is taking about... 30%, whereas um, other countries like um, Saudi Arabia also play a major part in this extraction of oil, taking about 20%. And then we have 
Russia, which also plays a, a, a very important um, role in this extraction in terms of obviously the uh, where we'll find this uh, production in large quantity. And Russia is about 20%. Then you see natural gas, US takes up about uh, almost 40%. And you see Russia as well. And we also see Myama. Then um, other minerals like the co copper, nickel, Chile and Indonesia play a very um, important role in this extraction. So we find it majorly in Chile and in Indonesia. And um, the percentages is about um, 30 significant 30 and 40 percent and we see cobalt the dominic republic of congo takes lead there and then rare earth elements china takes lead lithium australia takes the lead in in extraction then going over to processing oil refiner refinery and lng exports we have us taking lead then copper China, nickel, China, cobalt, China, lithium, China, and the rare earths elements, China. So that's to show us the, the various um, capacities of these countries in terms of this energy production. So um, this shows us that there will continue to be rising investments in this particular in minerals. Now, looking at the world energy mix production, what what's what's the energy mix and what's the projection for the for the future? Uh, the question here will be how might um, global energy use change in the future? In the, the the general aim normally is to get to net zero. Most of the countries have actually signed up the Paris Agreement. Some of them have declared that they would like to be net zero by 2050. However, in we have not even been able to achieve the 2% degree scenario. If you look at um, 2012, the consumption of um, coal, oil, and gas, we find out that they take the most percentage. You see that um, coal is about 21.3 percentage, oil is 31.4% and gas is 29%. And in the 2040 scenario, we will not even be, we'll, we'll definitely be over the 2% um, that we, 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 we might need to survive on the planet. As we, we can see there, we'll find out that also that, but then the good thing is that nuclear energy surges up, hydro and other renewable also surge up, but there's still a high capacity of coal, oil, and gas. Gas is at 22.2%, oil is 20.7%, and coal is 16.6%. But the red on the two degrees centigrade shows that we would definitely still be above this two degrees centigrade. So we're not on a good path. That's why we still need to find our way of reducing these emissions. And um, yes, they normally there's normally the conference of the parties where the countries come together to decide on how uh, they, they are going to uh, get these um, mitigation plans or adaptation plans to reduce this. The next one is going to be in Azerbaijan. But yeah, looking at where we are now, oil, coal and gas still as high up and will continue to be high up even as at 2050. With looking at the next um, uh, picture on this, this particular slide, you see that coal is at 40.8 degrees and gas is at 20 per 40.8% rather, than, and gas is at 20%. Why hydro, hydro is 16.4%, nuclear 14.7%. But the good thing is that the the, the clean energy is continuing surging up. And if we change our habits and the con you know on a large scale this could actually change because all these projections are projections that keep changing then looking at the interplay between mineral and energy policies 
national policy framework, governments establish policies to regulate mining extraction, trade and utilization, policies aim to balance economic development, environmental protection and energy security. Examples include licensing requirements, environmental regulations and taxation schemes of which in the developed world, they lose use a lot of that taxation and exchange schemes. There's this um, one where there's the, the returns um, exchange scheme. Then you have impact on mineral extraction. You have energy policies influence the accessibility and exploitation of mineral resources. Regulatory frameworks determine the conditions for exploration, mining, and production. Environmental considerations shape extraction methods and sustainability practices. Trade and utilization regulations. Energy policies govern the import, export, domestic distribution of minerals. And there's tariff, there's quotas, there's trade agreements in, in, in which impact global mineral markets. There's utilization policies which promote resource efficiency, recycling, and waste management. So, yeah, the energy policies are really strong. Different countries have their different regulations, and this is what governs how trades would happen and how um, extractions as well as how the minerals would come into plain energy mix and how they also get to the grid in production of energy. Then the opportunities and challenges in the mineral energy nexus. The energy mineral energy nexus refers to the interconnectedness between the mineral resources and energy production, encompassing various industries such as mining, oil and gas extraction, renewable energy, and traditional energy sources. Identifying opportunities and challenges within this energy uh, nexus involves the dynamic relationship between minerals and energy and the implications for sustainability, which requires balancing these resources, economic development, environmental stewardship. How is the relationship being formed? Is it enhancing or is it inhabiting the growth of this mineral? So all that will come into play between the uh, mineral energy um, nexus, as well as how the uh, implementations of the policies that we look at, that also affects how this um, mineral energy nexus would, the, would be the regime. Then identifying opportunities, resource synergies, certain minerals are essential for energy production, such as the rare earth elements, wind turbines, and lithium in batteries. Identifying deposits with high mineral concentrations can optimize resource extraction and support sustainable energy development. Technological innovation, advances in mining technologies such as automation and remote sensing, enhanced resource exploration and extraction efficiency. Advancements in renewable energy and energy storage improve energy production and distribution. Diversification of energy sources. Access to diverse mineral resources enables the development of various energy sources, including renewables like solar, wind, hydroelectric power, reducing dependence on fossil fuels and enhancing energy security. Secular economy initiatives. Recycling and reuse of minerals from end-of-life products and industrial waste contribute to resource conservation and reduce environmental impacts associated with mining and extraction. Mm -hmm investment opportunities. The mineral energy nexus presents investment opportunities in both traditional and renewable energy sectors, as well as in mineral exploration, extraction, and processing. What are the challenges in the mineral energy nexus? Resource scarcity and competition, growing demand for mineral and energy resources coupled with finite reserves and geopolitical tensions can lead to supply disruptions, price volatility, and competition for access to critical resources. Environmental impacts, mining and energy extraction activities can cause habitat destruction, water and air pollution, and contribute to climate change through greenhouse gas emissions, posing significant environmental challenges and necessitating sustainable resource management practices. Social and economic inequities, resource extraction projects often impact local communities. 
indigenous peoples and workers leading to social conflicts, displacement, labor rights violations. Addressing these inequities requires robust governance frameworks and stakeholder engagement processes. Energy transition challenges. Transitioning to renewable energy sources entails significant infrastructural and technological investments, regulatory reforms, and overcoming technical and economic barriers, particularly in regions heavily reliant on fossil fuels, waste management and pollution, the production and disposal of mining and energy related waste, including tailings, emissions and hazardous materials pose challenges for waste management and environmental remediation efforts, necessitating these stringent regulations and enforcement mechanisms. Many questions will be, what will be the enforcement mechanisms and regulations? How will it affect the different geographical regions that we are in? And how would we also um, mitigate these issues? So recommendations include resource management and governance, strengthening these resource regulations and enforcement mechanisms, implement transparent and inclusive governance frameworks, invest in research and development to explore alternative sources of critical um, elements, promote collaboration between public and private sectors, then environmental stewardship, adopt best practices for environmental management, encourage industry-wide initiatives for carbon capture, renewable energy integration, social responsibility and community engagement, foster relationships between companies, governments, civil society organizations to address social and economic challenges, as well as um, the uh, third sector organizations. Then prioritize community-driven development initiatives that empower local stakeholders, energy transition and resilience, develop comprehensive energy transition plans that prioritize renewable energy deployment, provide targeted financial in incentives, subsidies, and capacity building support to facilitate the trans transition, which IMSEP is doing very well at providing some capacity building already. Then risk management and contingency planning, conduct robust risk assessments and scenario planning exercises to anticipate and mitigate potential disruptions to mineral and energy supply chains, including geopolitical tensions, natural disasters, and market fluctuations. Enhance international cooperation and information sharing mechanisms to promote resilience, transparency, and accountability in global resource markets and energy networks. Further recommendations include data transparency and monitoring, capacity building and knowledge exchange, community-based natural resource management, long-term planning and risk management, policy coherence and regulatory alignment, public awareness and stakeholder management, policy reviews is also important. And then that takes us to the next slide, which is, you know, just concluding and um, delving further into what the mineral statistics are. I believe I didn't read about, okay, I've read about community-based natural resource management, long-term planning and risk management, okay? So delving into the mineral statistics, their impact on the energy mix reveals essential insights crucial for effective energy planning. Why these analysis offer invaluable benefits, they also underscore challenges and the challenges are resource scarcity and environmental implications inherent in mineral extraction and energy production and inherent in this um, particular context refers to uh, the, con the, the com com community based, every community has this um, um, in environmental issues that is faced that is unique to them. Um, this these minerals are quite community based in the sense that you find them at the local communities. So, the next one is, as we navigate these comple complexities, it becomes imperative to leverage these insights to inform evidence-based policies and strategic investments in renewable energy sources by fostering collaboration among stakeholders and promoting responsible resource 
management practices, we can pave the way for cleaner, more sustainable future. In essence, the thorough examination of MINA statistics not only informs decision-making, but also empowers us to address the evolving energy landscape with foresight and innovation. Through collaborate, co collective and collaborative efforts, we can overcome challenges, seize opportunities, and chart a course towards a resilient and environmentally conscious energy paradigm for generations to come. Thank you very much for listening. And at this point, I'll hand over to the next speaker. Thank you for inviting me to Gideon. Yeah. Um... Um, thank you very much. That was a very wonderful, succinct, and straight to the point. I always appreciate your contribution to this uh, uh, meeting. Thank you so much. I before I move to okay, uh, before I move to the next discussant, um, uh, I have a lot of few things to contribute there, which is very important for us locally. But I will, uh, I will want to. Maybe first of all, bringing um who the next discussant to so that we can bring this home. Uh, Alex, um, do some certain things we have here. Uh, I'm bringing in David Omokore. Uh, David, David is um, David is is a graduate from Federal University of Technology Mina, and has since worked uh, in several firms from. Um, from environmental consulting firm where he actually uh, trained as an environmental scientist and later joined uh, Jodel Integrated Systems Limited, trained as a mineral exploration geologist with over 12 years of consistent uh, field experience. And David has been a part of a number of successful mineral exploration expeditions in different parts of the nation, traversing this north to the south of this country. I've known David very well personally, and I've dealt, um, done some couple of work with him. Um, David is a highly experienced field person. And today we want to actually be going into, I think what I will need to do here is I have some couple of, um, first of all, um, I will say just a few couple of uh, questions to guide David to do some few discussions within the next 10 minutes before we can actually open the floor for a general uh, um, country contributions from the platform. Uh, David here, I will actually want you to just um, elucidate some points by um, talking more on the key minerals resources essential for energy production as regards to Nigeria. How do they, how do we, you know, assess, are they actually available? What are the availability and extraction impact on the overall energy mix? You know, that is it. And uh, this one that, uh, which ones are actually, are we going to focus on at our strength? Uh, I want you to actually speak on that, then before we go to the next one. So David, you are welcome to the platform. You can unmute yourself. You can unmute, I've asked you, I've given you permission to unmute. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, greetings to uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chidema, for the presentation. So um, let's go straight into discussing the minerals we have in Nigeria that can contribute to the energy mix. Energy mix. Yeah, so if you look at um, our current energy production in Nigeria, well, first of all, let me clarify something. When we talk up, we're talking about sources of energy. The first thing that comes to mind, people are talking about power generation um, to put on the national grid. And but no, when we're talking of energy, you're talking of, of every form of energy that we use in daily life. You know, your 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 cooking gas is a form of energy. Uh, um what you use in powering your car is a form of energy. Um, the national grid you have to power houses and all those things, they are all part of the energy mix. Now, unfortunately, Nigeria still has 70% of the 
of its energy production through biomass. By biomass, I mean the local charcoal, firewood, and uh, you know, and all the all the all the likes of it. Now you will agree with me that when you go through everyday life in Nigeria, you notice that even in big cities, we still use firewood, we still use charcoal, we even export charcoal. You know, we export charcoal, we export wood. These are some of the things we use in producing energy. A cake means we use in producing energy in Nigeria, which has, you know, very devastating environmental effects. However, in Nigeria, we have a lot of alternatives. Now, in the early days, what we had as our major source of energy was coal. You know, when coal was discovered in Enugu and uh, going through parts of the Benue Trough, uh, Kogi State, uh, Benue State, uh, and other, other states that have coal. Coal was always being used back then. Now, by the time oil was discovered, the drop in the use of coal, you know, began. And then you have the coal industry gradually dying out in Nigeria. Initially, you had, uh, uh, what's the name of the Institute? Uh, National Coal Corporation. They were the ones in charge of coal, sole uh, control of coal mining, extraction, and all that uh, in Nigeria. And they were the ones that were supplying coal to, their, I think their major, their major consumer was the Nigerian Railway Corporation then. All our railways were coal power trains. By the time oil was discovered, we started moving to cleaner energy. I always like to use the word cleaner energy. There is no such thing as clean energy. Every form of energy has one form of environmental degradation that it, it, it comes, that is antecedent to it. So if we say cleaner, we're, do, we're, we're talking in, in, in uh, relative to uh, other forms of energy. So uh, all the talk of clean, um, uh, lithium being clean energy, it's actually just clean energy. It's not clean energy anywhere. You're still going to mine. You're still going to destroy the environment. You're still going to have some form of effect on um, the environment, on climate change, one way or the other, but less effect. Now, for instance, so that's how the coal industry came down. And we started moving gradually into gas, into um, um, oil and hydro and other things in, in the country until we were heavily reliant on that. Now, it's important to note that coal is still the major supply, major source of energy supply worldwide. If you're taking a worldwide um, uh, census, you're taking a worldwide statistics, coal is still the number one in terms of energy production. But over the years, we're seeing a shift to cleaner energy. Now, that shift to cleaner energy is, means, you know, more countries begin to let go of coal and then move into cleaner energy. And Nigeria is not an exception. Nigeria has also tried to put more emphasis on cleaner energy. Now, coming down to the list of um, uh, minerals that we that power the cleaner energy. Do we have these minerals in Nigeria? Yes, we do. Uh, God has blessed us with abundance of it. Aside from coal, um, we have we have some of I think next to I think Algeria also we have the highest second highest gas um, deposits in Africa. So that's something I think we need to focus on so that we reduce gas flaring and we increase our dependence, our use, utilization of gas. That's one, we've got a lot of it. Two, the advent of the discovery of lithium, it's a fantastic one. It's one that uh, the country is still grappling with how to go, you know, how to understand it. For now, we still have a lot of companies that are mining lithium, 
we've heard a lot of talks about um, uh, starting up battery factories, lithium-ion battery factories in Nigeria. I think largely a lot of it is still a lot of talk now. Very few players have actually made uh, attempts into converting raw lithium into lithium-ion batteries, but then it's still for exports. I'm, I'm sure with the way some of these players are, are coming in, you know, the private sector, that is one of the joy of the lithium industry processing plants and eventually you know developing the whole value chain of of uh, lithium up to um making battery starting up um you know battery factories in nigeria at least i've had a talk with a number of companies who are interested in that they are putting in investments. I know one or, one or two who have processing plants on ground. Aside from what you see the Chinese doing, I'm even talking of people that are not Chinese now. Uh, Nigerians, local Nigerians who are putting in their, 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 their money down to develop this industry. Now it's essential that we continue to bring in policies that will assist in developing, you know, this, energy mix. So we've got lithium, we've got natural gas. Those are the places we need to put efforts into. For okay, coal, Dave, coal Dave, right? if, if I should come in there, Dave, if I should come in there, what you are saying is that we should focus our strength on what we have, like the, the, the oil and gas, the lithium and the, the coal. Yes. Is that what you said yes. in summary? Okay, is there yes. another mineral we are recommending we should focus on? Because there's something I want to also bring our attention to. Uh, the one of the slides, the one of the okay. slides I want us to go back to to look at also, which is very critical in this discussion. I want to bring okay. that discussion at this before I go to it, because the next thing I actually wanted to, I wanted you to bring in, because um, we do not have much time. The next thing I wanted to bring in is um, um, the issue of uh, the implication of uh, some of the government influences and some of the policies that we see from yeah. different states well, and all that, how they actually um, go in. But let me, let me just bring up this, let me bring up this, um, let me bring up this um, this uh, slide now. This slide, uh, Blyce slide. Okay, let me see here. Um, if you are looking at this slide, look at this slide here. I can't see it yet. Now look at this slide here. Look at this slide now. If you look at this slide, are you seeing okay. it now? Uh, if you look at this okay. slide, you can see that it is. You know, if you look at it, what we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, the much um, information that are actually available in Nigeria for any of the minerals here, if you can say, beat your hand, chest, and say the mineral, you know, you can actually boost up here. I know you can talk about the lithium, the rock lithium, actually. The rock yes. lithium here is here in Nigeria. You talk about the zinc, the REH, are there as mostly of, uh, I would say, mineralizations or kind of a theoretical uh, projections and yeah. all that. And uh, aluminum. But if you look at these minerals, these metals, now you found out that copper is leading in terms of, and I've learned one of the things you've said, which is very correct. You say cleaner energy because every energy comes with each floors. So um, yeah. one of the cleaner, when you talk about the cleaner energy in terms of the mineral that actually stand the test of time, a part of energy requirement is our demand is actually crazy in the issue of copper. Because if you look at the copper usage utilization, you found yes. that the copper is leading in terms of solar, solar PV, in terms of wind, in terms of, yes. in terms of bio energy, in terms of electric networks, EVs, battery storage, and all that. So after the copper, do we have the copper? Is there is there for, um, a possibility of, of focusing our minds on copper? It, it, personally, if you ask me, I would say that we are not actually in active zone compared to yeah. Zambia and other copper or other yeah. copper field of the world. Actually, uh, most of the copper we have here comes out as accessory, but I don't see I don't see if there's any yeah. deputy that we can mine mainly as copper. Which other people in the platform may actually want to contribute to this? But I want you to look at this and see if there are any thoughts you are sharing based on this slide. Yes, unfortunately, we are not uh, we are not known for 
um, copper, uh, rich copper deposits in Nigeria, just as you've said. Um, having worked on several projects, uh, even with my time with GISL, I remember when um, we would do exploration for gold, and sometimes we we hit quartz veins that have lead and then has lead zinc has uh, some copper deposits uh within it um you know uh, malachite and and all that but then it's so they're usually in not economically viable quantities that we can boast of i i currently have a client who is a Nigerian investor and he is actually looking for this kind of minerals that are essential for cleaner energy. So he had to leave Nigeria and go to Zambia. He's in Zambia today. He has bought up a major mine in Zambia. It's very soon I'll be posting the um, the the news uh, news article on that. He's bought up a major mine. In, in in Zambia for copper and also several is is working on copper zinc you know some of these um, minerals that are essential just as you have said copper is essential for any form of the energy mix you know most of the transition the uh, movement of electricity from the generation to to the houses and all that, you need aluminium, you need copper. Yeah, okay, so, okay, go, okay. Dave, let me let me just draw you very fast because my my interest here is how we can develop our strength. That is my yes. interest here. What we don't have or what we don't know might be existing. Another thing is some other people might argue of what data do you have? After all, for me personally, I know part of the country that are always finding it difficult to get to get the right data to actually work on. You understand when it comes to the south, come to the Obudu and all that. I know there are some places, you know. Do we have enough data? That is one. Let's leave that. Is a question that I want general the general um platform to have to look at and contribute based on different individuals' um experiences and exposure to exploration. You understand? Another thing I wanted to actually go in fast because I will in the next uh, um, uh, three minutes, I will actually move to the general platform. And before that, please, if you have your contributions, just indicate by raise of hand so that immediately I finish, I can actually come to you. I can actually omit you so that I can get your contribution before we start question. Contribution first before we go into questions. So if you have contribution, please just indicate so that I can pick you one after the other according to that. But before that, uh, I want you to actually look at, I've, this morning I got calls. What is the call all about? The call has been the ease of doing businesses in Nigeria. A lot of people that have actually come in and some people that have actually gone into the bush, dot um, exploration and all that. Suddenly you see some influences or interferences from, from the state, from the local government interfering with, it's not, it's not the news that some states come up to say whatever they want and they ban mining. And some will tell you go to help the mining lease or whatever you have and all that. What is the implication of this to, to, to the security of energy minerals? What is the implication of all these interferences? Um, un unfortunately, the Nigeria is one country where um, the political environment has very strong influence on almost everything that we do. I think of recent, I heard the news of uh, state government, I think Kogi State was part of them, that banned traditional rulers from giving um, consent to companies that come. You know, this, uh, this, this kind of um, in interferences from state government, we know the state governments have been clamoring to, you know, share part of the cake. They don't want the solid minerals to continue to be domiciled with the federal government. They want a part of it. I think they've been a lot, a lot of them have been myopic. If they know that they could start up companies owned by their by the state to also invest and develop, they won't be bothering, you know, with fighting with the federal government on it. And then um 
the geopolitical factors are a bit different depending on the the zones you're in there are parts of parts of nigeria that you go to that it's almost as if the federal government doesn't exist the way the state governments the local governments there will rein in on mining companies they are forced to part pathways with a lot you know of their earnings to the local community uh uh you know so that they can do business now there are a lot of there are a lot of reasons that we can give to this maybe because the federal government has not really done its oversight for community development projects it has not done its oversight to ensure that the environment is reclaimed properly and all those things mm -hmm. so you know the locals have more or less taken uh the laws into their own hands you know so policies and um geopolitical factors have very very far reaching effects on 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 mining businesses so most okay. times people okay yeah, um on. on that on that let me just take you finally on this um in terms of uh, the politics most people in nigeria will tell you that we have policies uh, the implementation and all that. Do you yeah, think it just will have the policy? Do you think we'll have a robust? Do you think we'll have a robust policy based on what is available now, alongside with uh let's okay, say the implementation of these policies are the problem. But do you think that what we have we have on ground is enough to actually move us forward? Yes, we do. Everybody knows, everybody in this industry knows that we have a very robust policy in this extractive industry in Nigeria. But then the, the enforcement, uh, the corruption factor, um, all these things add up to make those policies ineffective. You know, you remember, I remember, when was it that the minister came in and wanted to do, he wanted to do some quick work on artisanal mining, and next thing the minister was complaining that some powerful Nigerians are, uh, you know, uh, working against him, not going because they are the ones sponsoring um, illegal miners, artisanal miners, majority mm -hmm. of whom are illegal in their operations. You know, so these things have far-reaching effects. Okay, um, thank you, um, David. I thank you um, so much for your wonderful contribution. Stand by. Um, let's just go straight to the to the platform and get some contribution from other persons. Um, since. Some hands here. Okay, let me just uh, please make your contribution. Thirty seconds, very straight, um, uh, straight to the point, so that we'll be able to accommodate other things and other people that want to actually ask questions and speak. Please, if you have after the contribution, we'll go straight to the questions and we can actually round it up. Um, the first person here is uh, um, engineer Dr. Aguleti. Please, can you make your contribution? Uh, is he unmuted? Yes, yes. You can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. I can now unmute myself. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, all. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, and then. Uh, uh, a well uh, deserved uh, uh, very good uh, contribution from my friend David too. I know we will not stop by making more of this contribution uh, impact to develop our sector. However, I incidentally, I had a little chat with one of uh, one of our colleagues who had um, you know an opportunity to cite one or two equipment in this country. And uh, you see, personally, I'm very aggressive when things are not, you know, working. And uh, I hope that uh, our fellow colleagues will join us uh, to make sure that this sector is is working. Because until the sector is working, because before all of us will enjoy it. Uh, I take a little bit back when I during my PhD program that I had to send uh, my sample to Ghana just for uh, same EDS. <coughs> And uh, a, a colleague of ours is telling us now in this country that possibly to the mind of whatever the government, don't let me be too specific, had to procure semi-dias for us in this country. Then I say, for goodness sake, who is going to use this equipment? And I think we should be 
coming out now to tell whosoever is in leadership, we need to use these tools. You will hear, oh, we bought this equipment here, we bought that one there, we bought this one, and yes, they will tell you, you have a laboratory, can, uh, can do now, you have this other. But please, bring this in now. Let's talk about this. And what I'm saying this is that now we begin to talk about data. What data are we talking about when we can't have access to equipment or run this uh, uh, analysis? How are we supposed to get data? I need to send ordinary Canada, to Canada and also the approach in this country. And I'm saying that we should begin to have more of advocacy for them to know that, yes, we know that you have bought it with money. It's there. It's like you bought a TV, you hung it to your wall, and you're not watching it. For goodness sake, let us be more proactive in letting all this uh, Let's say something that is going to get into their years. At least an undergraduate, or even if a postgraduate person, should be able to work into a laboratory in Kaduna there. And run those simple XRD, XRF. And of course, this data will be available for us to begin to affirmatively say that this is the content of XYZ minerals in social um, uh, rocks. We do not have much of those data. You go to the field, you collect so much samples. You cannot run an analysis of fair. Now, we didn't know that if you have to patronize the, 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 the Western world, possibly Canada or US for analysis, that the dollar is playing parts. For how long are we going to be talking about this? Let's have more uh, advocacy so uh, that we can patronize what we have here. Yeah, um, Dr. Uh, I know, uh, I know uh, I know I let me... To say, to be yeah, you see... <laughs> Let me, let me, yes, I understand, I understand what you are saying. Can you hear me? Yes, I got your point, you got your point. See, what you are saying is very, if I should uh, um, um, contribute to what you are saying, it is very clear that you cannot buy a television and hang it somewhere on the wall by the side of your house and it's not, nobody makes use of it. This is exactly what is obtainable in most places, short. I've been called to one of the ministries. Um, Dr. Mrs. Alao will be a witness. She went with me. Uh, one of those ministries bought this equipment. Um, Christopher, you should know the amount of Nighton uh, 3, um, 3T. And that equipment, I was called to come and commission it. To my greatest surprise, the equipment had been lying in the office for two years. <laughs> the equipment was lying in that office. And this equipment, he said, as of this morning, I reached out to Christopher that I'm in need of XRF equipment on a particular um, for a particular um, uh, um, uh, project. You know, that equipment was, I went to commission it. It was lying down there for two years. You saw the warranty, the period of warranty, everything has actually expired. Okay. So nobody in the offices could even put the equipment on, knew how to handle the equipment. But the equipment had been lying there for two years. You understand? And this is a government property. It's not. They were eating by they didn't buy their money. And this equipment that cost about now in Naira should okay. be talking about 70, 80 million naira. You understand? So these are the issues we are talking about. Um, there should be more um there should be more um efforts from everybody to make sure that uh this thing's actually done. You can't go from here, simple analysis will go to Ghana. Imagine go to Ghana to Ghana and do analysis and come back. How many will you gonna, how many are you gonna do? I have about 1,500 samples to analyze right now, just on a simple recognition basis. And these are the kind of things that you could take into anywhere and just run it and see some of the elements and go back. And I'm not even talking about AES or AES or trying to talk about um, um, other kind of a complex uh, <laughs> testing and all that. So there are still a very huge uh, uh, issues around some of these in, in, in terms of acquiring data for for geological uh, information. Uh, Enoch, Enoch was raising his hand. Please, Enoch, can we hear your contribution? Is it still there? I can't see your hands again. Enoch, are you there? Um, Where is he? Is he out? Okay, let me see. Okay, if he's not there, let's go. Yeah. Is, it, is it there? He's muted. Okay, Enoch, I can't even see his hand. Well, his hand was, he was, he's muted. Let me find his, uh, wait, wait. Okay, he's there. Okay, Enoch, you, you, can, uh, yourself. you can unmute yourself now. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes, we can. Okay, 
Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. And uh, I'll, for let me just go straight to my contribution. I think minerals which we have advantage in the country should be, like we said, we've not really developed the copper, but we have vast uh, deposits from an experience of, of bauxite that are sitting idle, which can oh. be developed. We have yeah. bauxite. And then the copper too, you know, I think we have we have sufficient uh, deposits of copper which we could work on, especially Malachi. Because okay. for my, uh, this is what I've studied for a while and I've seen that we have concentrations. If you're looking for 1%, Enoch, are you there? Enoch, this is a very important statement you are making here, and I don't know why you are breaking yeah. this. Very, you must not very, stop very that. Important. I can give you more time for that contribution because I have some things for you to explain. Are you there? You cannot go off uh, now. I think he's off. <laughs> because I needed, you know, that is very yeah. interesting. I needed him to tell us on the mode of occurrence of of this of this uh, copper. Yeah. Whether the azurite, the malachite, or the chacopyrite, or the pyrite, or the pyrites, let's see the mode of occurrence. Then uh, let's understand um, are they just in accessories and other? What are the percentages they are seen and are they actually mined them? What extent of work are they actually done on them? Is a very good information for us. Maybe that can also, also give us some more information because for me, I believe that minerals are just wherever you find them. Yes, minerals can be need, anywhere. You know, need more. Yes, yeah, after all, more, after more all, the, the, the lithium that are actually coming up now, even in Ghana, they, no, nobody knew that they had such amount of lithium. You understand? So, is a way next uh, that could actually um, spoil a lot of people to actually go into them. But before he comes back, maybe we can go to this um, question um, section. So, we can take some questions now. If you have questions based, on some other thing, then you can actually come up with that. Okay, let me admit, let me just say unmute. I think, is it back? Let me look for him and, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can unmute yourself. Is, yeah. Please, if you have questions, Okay, sorry, I was, uh... I can give you opportunity, please. Go if on, you can you hear me now? Can... Yeah, go on, then not go on. For the, copper, for the copper, a co yeah. yes, yes. For the for the copper, we have a uh, in the you have some good uh, appreciable deposits from Plateau ben, uh, Bauchi axis to to the north Zamfara, where mainly malachite. For uh, chacoparites in the east, is mainly accessories. You don't have vast deposits of chacoparite. It just comes associated in your lead bearing veins. Mm. We have some on the side, you just see some ch chacopyrites, usually indicative that you have you're on the right track for during exploration. Mm. But up, at, other than that, you just pass the chacopyrite layer, then you enter the, the lead veins, the lead and zinc. But in, in Zamfara, you have a lot, you have vast amounts of uh, oxidized layers for malachite, usually mm. low grade 0.5 percent to 2 percent, but yeah. vast amount, yeah. vast deposit. I knew that, yeah, so they, the, yeah, yeah, so you know, and the issue is that the. The, the Chinese then, the, most of the off makers then were looking for 10, 15%. But when you look at the world production, you see that it comes from us from 0.02%. And we have 0.5 to 1%, 2% VAS. We should be using which it. Is still, which is still viable. Very viable. When you're using, uh, if you use technologies like uh, solvent extraction and uh, it's, it's, it's a straightforward process, which I think we should look at into. Same thing with bauxite too. We have bauxite of 35 to 40% VAS, VAS uh, from 30%. 25, 30 percent vast deposits, but you know the market yes. wants 50 percent, 45, 50 percent. But if we benefit all those and add values, yes, we have we, can, we have a lot of mind coming to life. Yes. So those are the those are the aspects where we have advantage right now, mm. which we could which we could tap to uh, to and cash. Copper, uh, is, copper is critical to the energy mix. Very critical, very critical. Mm. Yes. Uh, so thank you. Those are the my few my two cents. Yeah. Well, no. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Enoch. It's good to know. It's good to know. We'll, we'll, we'll do more research on that. Uh, I think Gideon is is offline. Okay, okay, he's he's back. He'll be back soon.
Sorry, I think I was the my light was interrupted. That's your country. Sorry for that. <laughs> That's your energy mix. <laughs> That's your energy mix. So <laughs> Okay, uh, Enoch, uh, that's a very nice contribution, but so are you saying that we should focus our, our, our attention to where is that part that will have security or the plateau that will have the security? Where do you think? If we dodge, if we dodge bullets, why are you aware? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's fine, that's fine. Maybe um, we can, the problem, that is it, the problem is, you know, when you have these issues, it affects almost everything you are going to do, everything you are doing. So everybody knows the issue of Zamfara. Uh, you are not even talking about only copper there and all that. We know that that place um, uh, can actually give us one of the largest gold deposits in the country, but nobody yeah. wants to go there. You know, Christopher doesn't want to go there. He's now in Platy. And it's you. <laughs> Uh, okay, Chris, Chris is that's the fine. They will pick um, him up please, easily. Please, let's go. Where are the uh, where are the questions? Do we have hands for further questions and all that? Do we have contributions? Okay, contributions and questions. I think we've read, we've got we've gone out of that. Okay, let's combine them. Contributions and questions. Please raise your hand so that I can. Yes. Someone is asking about the data in NJSA. Yes, okay, sorry, let me go to, let me just go to our, okay. Now, um. okay, there's some contributions here by Dr. Mrs. Sidi Katsalao. He said, please group, let's develop a program towards accessibility to MDS equipment in various areas of uh, of, uh, of, our of our profession to train the upcoming young geoscientists in the tertiary institutions. That has been the madam that, uh, Madam has been always uh, an advocacy of uh, training the young ones. You know, I, I'm not surprised. And everything she gets for is for the young ones to actually come up. Without Dr. Mrs. Allow, some of us would not be here. Somebody like us, like me in particular, you know, she has actually contributed a lot to, to the growth of the young ones. Another one, question aside assumptions. This question is coming from Jeff Fett. Aside assumptions, what information or, or data is available at N NDSA? I was thinking that the agency uh, we are in we are in for on mineral yeah, assets. We are in for mineral assets or debit house being surveyed for investment purposes. Yes. Okay. Um, I think here, yes, yeah, there are some informations um that you actually get from NGSA on a regional basis. Uh, most of the information actually done in NGS. NGS, what they do is, first of all, they map, most of their mapping are one is to 100,000, one is to 50,000. I think that is what they have now. I don't know if uh, they've started mapping to one is to 10,000 or one is to 5,000, you know, um, which is the actual, actually come down to, but what they give is like a first hand information for you to. NGS has all the data that has yeah. to tell you about the regional geology of a country. They have another interesting data that has to do with a magnetic, radiometric, some geochemical. But I think one of the robust data they've actually developed over the years is the magnetic and radiometric data. You know, um, there you can actually get, get that kind of data. But at the end of the day, you need to you need to actually bring this data down to what uh, to help you on investment basis. So you can also visit the NGSA website. Uh, um, there's a lot of uh, data based on what you want. You can actually get from there, but the data might not be actually, it depends on where you want to work and what you want to do. So you can get something from there if you are just coming in for investment, then from there you can be directed on some other um, kind of uh, data um, um, databases that could actually help you. So I don't think, I don't know if that is actually answered. Uh, uh, David, do you have anything on that? That answer it well. Okay, another one here. Um, weak implementation of the robust law. Here we need here we need all hands on deck for successful future improvement. We need collaborative efforts to achieve a sustainable development in this sector. Okay, another one is there. Okay, I think that is all I have on my information here. Okay, I am suggesting for soft copies of the paper represented at the, okay. Yes, no problem, you've sent in your email, 
the soft copies of the presentation will be sent to you at the end of the day. Uh, okay. That is it. Uh, okay, yeah, Yahaya is, who is this? Okay, Yahaya. Oh, Yahaya, where are you? Are you here? Yahaya is on as Lami Atta, please. The Almighty Yahaya, this is uh, one of um, our members that I actually won an award during uh, the January end of the year. Uh, Yahaya, are you there? You say you are here as this. Are you still? Okay, where is the, the Lami Atta? I can't even. Okay, let me see what we have here. Hmm. Okay, I'm seeing hands here. Okay, let me just, you can unmute yourself. Allow, I'm allowing anybody to unmute yourself now. So you can unmute yourself. You want to talk? Okay, Dr. Comfort Asopro, can you come on? You can unmute yourself and talk, please. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to you guys. You are doing a very, very good job. I just want to thank Dr. Salau for this um, facilitation that she's done. And with someone in my office, an international consultant on mining, and he's blown up. He's, he's, he's so impressed by, by the level of intellectual display. And he says, you mean youths like this are in Nigeria? I say, yes, you see them, right, for real. So, Salau, thank you so much for this platform. Thank you for... Am I still yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Salau, for bringing together uh, these brilliant minds. I'm seeing the mind of the, my office now. Uh, we appreciate you, ma'am. We thank you for giving the young ones the chance and pushing them, pushing us, because I, I, I'm one of them too, pushing us to, to, to make this huge impact and have this platform to discuss. I'm very proud of you guys. Uh, there are people in the office. I'm telling them, yes, this, this is our guy. No, so we, don't, we don't take last position. Thank yeah. you for being yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Mrs. Comfort Asukuru. I always admire your courage. And um, most of your activities are actually well known. Uh, like we say, I always tell you that. Don't hesitate to call us whenever you need our attention or you need you need us to come in and help us because in what you are doing is one of the things we are actually also looking for. And there are a lot of skills that we are actually lacking among the you know among our youths when it comes to this industry. So um, whatever we can do to enhance the skills and make uh, sure that our values are actually um, appreciated in the industry, we can actually go a long way to to do that. So we we'll thank you for that uh, uh, wonderful um, contribution. Um, also, okay, so I think that is it. We don't, uh, who else, whose hands? Yeah, Mr. Gideon. Opinion? Okay. Yes, Gideon. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, please permit me to make this short contribution for, yes, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, for some of us, we will not stick quiet for us to get better. You know, personally, yeah. I, I'm not a Japa person. And it is because I believe so much in this country. You know, recently, I had to review someone's exploration work. And um, mm -hmm. of course, again, I was a bit involved during the, um, the recce, or should I say during the mapping, so to say. But I discovered that these guys just went to the field. You know, they they, they, they appear more like an international consultancy uh, consultant, especially mm. via the the company to which got the job. But uh, when they want to go into the field, one guy and uh, one Nigerian guy, and he went to the face like that, okay, perhaps we can learn new things. Approach is something different entirely. Because these guys, when they see granite, they sample the granite. When they see this, they sample them. But you know what? When they made their final presentation, I discovered, and in fact, I was, I wouldn't use the word that I was ashamed. Because someone who is not even a geologist is beginning to coach 
our supposed geology of the needful for us to understand basic geology. Mm. And it's beginning to tell you what are the indicators for you to go and explore for gold in the first place. I remember, I remember my, my, my professor says that uh, Why well, some of you graduate, you become a very or oh, because you know it or this, you can't be looking for oil in Abuja. And again, I remember him saying that these rocks are not stupid like you guys. We are geologists and we know where we should look out for some of these rocks. Somebody will give you work to go and study. So to share your my experience with you, this guy went to the field, collect all sorts of samples. Believe me, they sent. 101 samples to Canada for analysis. Yeah. Uh, return, do you know min uh, uh, minus uh, less than 0.5% part per million gold? And I said that, am I expecting anything different in the first place? As far as I'm concerned, you have just wasted all that money. Hmm. Because if you have, for example, Maps, and this is what Dr. Mrs. Salah always taught us. When she always tell you, map the structures. You are looking for gold. Map the structures, get the causeway, for example, especially those boggy cogs. And then you can tell that you will nearly want to get a very good part per million of the gold. But you see, because Consortium or Consorta was you. I'm very glad when it is all kind of differences. And I want to encourage us, just the same way the uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Sasukuro, uh, you know, told us. Yes, we may have been, they, they may think we are here. Hmm. But let us be strong. Uh, Okay, your network seems not stable. More from ourselves. that we need to do because whenever we are given an opportunity, we should be able to use that have notice, but we must prepare ourselves. Okay, uh, then please, you can just. Okay. Hello, Gideon. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Your network was a bit at uh, the end of towards the end of the was a bit. Okay. I think. No, no, uh, thank no, you no, for. No, no. Uh, thank you for that contribution. Um, I think that's fine. Um, what I will urge us all is, we can't stop talking. Um, we must keep talking. The more we talk, definitely, maybe one day someone will hear. You know. Um, the worst thing is to keep quiet and we think we don't have hope. But the fact that we are talking means that. We still have hope. We still believe that a lot of things will change. You know, now everybody is saying mineral industry. Okay, I wouldn't tell us what is actually happening in the forex, what the dollar is turning into naira, and what naira is turning into dollar on daily basis and all that. So I still believe that there are still hope. There are a lot of things to be done. There are a lot of things to be done. We need to actually uh, put all our efforts together. That's why we try to bring in this platform together you know is a platform that everybody who is consigned uh is not limited to anybody it's not limited to geologists not limited to mine anybody who has interest in the mining industry of this nation is actually permitted to come here speak say what you want to say make your contributions query anything you want to query and actually be actually it will actually be um uploaded on our websites and it's also there so what i believe in is that one day we need our impact actually will be felt. So I also urge us as professionals to let's do the right thing in the field. Let us do the right thing. Those short costs, most of the time, are not the best uh, way to go. Most of us are good with short costs. They want to do it today and get done with it. But at the end of the day, we found out that we're not doing the right thing. So um, I believe that that is the way to go. Another thing is that there's another way of uh, thinking that uh, the one this in, this is another way to go met metallogeny of different mineral deposits to save cost the exploration program. This is to sustainable mining uh, development. Okay, that is another contribution from Dr. Mrs. Salau here.
Netflix. I think that is it for today. We are actually uh, at this juncture that we need to recognize some people who have actually uh, made a very nice contribution to today's uh, edition of our program. Another program actually comes by the 28th of February, which is going to be on Berite importation. And that is, all of us know who is one of the power king of Berite in Nigeria, um, Patrick. Uh, I don't know why he's not here today. That is very, 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 it's not common, you know. Um, I also want to bring him to the platform and some other people uh, who may actually want to contribute to the Berite mobilization and importation issues we have around it. So that will be on Wednesday, 28th of February. We'll be actually, <clears throat> sorry, coming together on that. Uh, today, I want to also appreciate um, Chidema Ero. It's, it's been a very nice one having you to talk to Rox from all the way from UK. I know how busy you are and all that, but to be able to um, put your efforts, your time, and your money to this. I thank you and appreciate you. Uh, David, I was able to hold you down today. Uh, thank you, even though I know how it is. Maybe you might be in one of the forests today. I thank you. And I think <laughs> I'm trying to see a lot of people are here. Um, uh, people that I uh, thank everyone. I'm seeing, um, okay, Mohammed Sani, I uh, thank you um, for actually making it. He's an uh, engineer, Dr. Agility. Your contributions are well noted and we appreciate your concerns. You have been always uh, spoken when it comes to this. Um, to these issues, you know. Um, also, Dr. <coughs> Mrs. Comfort, I will thank you for your contribution. Um, Tayo Ajani has been always a contributor to this program. Um, you are welcome. I'm seeing you are here. Uh, I'm seeing some names actually that uh, I've not seen before, but I welcome you, Abiodu Sadiq. I don't know Abiodu Sadiq. I'm not sure I've seen the name. Ab Moses. Uma Yadev, uh, right? Um, Daniel Amiwero, uh, okay, um, you're welcome. Enoch, I love your contribution. I want to know more of you. Um, Enoch B, uh, are you in our group, in my group? Enoch, are you there? Are you in our group? Because I want to expand some further discussions on this with you. Enoch, okay, you call him, it's my name. Okay, are you in our email group? Are you? Oh, of course, no. Did you? Okay, okay, okay. You know, I didn't see yeah. your face. I don't know. I have a lot yeah, of names yeah, in my friend, head, yeah, but I've not met a lot of people. You know, um, yeah. Ibrahim, you are welcome. Uh, yeah, Esther yeah. Tingoba, no contribution from you today. That is not very common. You are welcome. Um, Rufai Hafiz, um, Jafet, um, Joe Ibe. Uh, these names are uh, Madabuchi Ogu. You are welcome. Mitchell, you've been hiding since today. No contribution, unusual. <laughs> Um, uh, Dr. Mrs. Salah, I'm not heard from you today, um, but you've been sending messages and writing. I'm surprised. Some women that I know that they must say something, they have not said something. So I'm feeling as if something is wrong somewhere. I don't know why. Mitchell has been hiding things. Esther has been hiding. Um, so these are people that actually have been a, a major forces to some of these programs who actually contribute on a uh, monthly basis. I think I want us at this juncture to actually put up our pictures. Maybe we'll just take a picture as we actually yeah. close on today's edition. I thank you and I appreciate you all. And I see now that you're going to have a very wonderful. Okay, Enoch. I'm... Okay, see you. Is that Enoch? Is that I? Is he? It may be a picture. I don't even say that my man. <laughs> okay, okay. Is that? You see? That's why sometimes you see pictures. You have to recall. I was like, ah, who is this? Oh, I was like, oh, please, I'm just trying to my mind. It was just black. Maybe I see your picture and I know who is actually talking. <laughs> okay, um, Madam Salao, maybe today, uh, maybe there's a hammer time in Abuja. She doesn't want to actually speak, but I have actually <laughs> want to speak. Uh, she's been actually writing. She's been writing and writing and writing and writing. And some of us cannot speak and they cannot write. No, that is not a good one. Because when you write, we might actually learn from it. I learned a lot today. I learned something on copper, which I'm going to actually, I'm trying to, um, that will actually, I'll take it up to see. My curiosity is there because today somebody sent me so many messages yes. of copper, you know, I'll actually try to look at that more because I don't believe that nothing is not existing anywhere. Something must exist somewhere. Let something be somewhere. You understand? 
And secondly, I learned something again. Um, one of the ways I like to be using now is a cleaner energy, not a clean energy. Chidima, I hope you, you actually got that. Clean, also, cleaner I, energy, very yeah, correct. Cleaner, cleaner yeah, energy, all very in all. Mining. Mm, yeah. this, so all also, <laughs> I'm only trying to recall the things that actually I got today. And also, I think that uh, the issue of coal, we're actually forgetting, should not be forgotten. Um, a lot of energy mix are yeah. coming from coal from UX, from India, um, from Japan. It's one of yeah. the biggest coal plants is actually somewhere in Japan. I've read about that. Yeah. And I know that um, we've not even generated one, even 0.00, 0, 0 whatever. The major from industry, the, the major cement industry producers, they are that. using So we can coal. also use what we have. If we have, over four, if we have over 4 billion tons of yes. coal lying that, that in the Atlantic Basin, what are we going to do with them? And we are always struggling to actually produce just less than 5,000 megawatts uh, in a country of over exactly. 220, 220 million. So there's a problem. We have problem. We have problem. I don't know how we're going to solve this problem, but we need to solve this problem. We don't need to give up. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I believe that all of us have something to actually put in place. In our group, we're over close to about 400 of us. 400 of us. Imagine the 400 of us keep talking every day, keep talking, keep talking. And we bring in more 400 and bring it. That means if we have 400, we can get to thousands in just a matter of a day. So it's all about what we want to put our ears and what we want to put our mouth on. And these things are going to actually go, going to come to pass. So I thank every one of us as we take our pictures for the day so that we can go back to our various uh, activities for the day. Thank you very much. Who is taking the picture? Esther, you are, take yours. Mitchell, take yours. Chidema, take yours. These are people I know I can hold responsible. Um. Other ones, other of my guys, I'm not going to tell them to take the picture because... Gideon, the one that you took was quite um, elaborate. It had the... Okay, you want to take... Okay, the yeah, last one. Yeah, use that your desktop. Um, okay, um, okay, I've taken one. Mm. Um, but a lot of people are still hiding. They're not removing the... A lot of people are still not... Uh, they are still not showing... Yes, the cameras are not on. Um, I'm on page two now. Okay, let me go back to page one. Page one. Uh, hey, a lot of people are coming up page one. Even if you are, even if you don't have light, no problem. We are in Nigeria. You can put it on. You understand? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, yes. Good that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, hey, see, I'm late. Uh, what are you talking? All of you are, even if your office is, doesn't have lights, we understand. No problem. Let's put it on. I've taken another one. Okay. Um, I think okay. Ah, uh, hmm, Madam Mitchell is here. Let me take another one. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I'm taking this one. Let me go to page two now. Um, we have interesting numbers today. We got up to thought something, okay? In this busy schedule, okay? That is it. Okay, I'm seeing Joe Ibe. Joe Ibe, I've not met you before, but I think I need to welcome you to the platform. And I'm seeing um, Bernard. Bernard. Bernard, is it Bernard from Ghana? Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you see, this is my geologist <laughs> I met in Ghana. That's interesting. Tayo, Tayo. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. I can see you. Uh, I can see you. Um, Jamil Ibrahim, thanks for joining us. I'm not sure I've met with you. Um, Tedmond, Jagere. Tedmond, uh, <coughs> that's the big guy in Lagos. The Tedmond Lab, right? Okay, Tedmond, you're welcome. And who else am I seeing the face here? Okay, Samuel. Samuel, I've not seen this face. You are welcome. You're welcome to the platform. Mwaki Be Molokusa. You are welcome. We appreciate you. You're yeah, welcome to the platform. Um, who else have I seen the fix? Okay, Daniel Amiwero. I've not seen the fix. Do I know the fix? You're yeah, welcome. You're yeah, welcome. Daniel uh, Amiwero is my is my schoolmate. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Uh, Abraham yeah. Akalain. Abraham Akalain. Yeah, big, I love that. Name. Big boys yeah, talking welcome. quietly. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And I say time we stopped and uh, have a blessed day ahead of you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you very much. And well uh, done, everyone. <laughs> Enjoy me. Yeah, bye. Thank you all. Yeah, bye. bye.